I think we're live. The new champ is in the house. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success has landed them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. Eight or nine. Oh, we are live in studio. Back at the old studio. Yes. Temporarily. I don't think Jeff paid his uh, internet bill at the new studio. The internet got cut off at the new studio. I, I think that's what happened. <laughs> and no, it didn't get cut off. They, they are having a little hiccup. We wanted to bring it over here just to be safe and to make sure everything was good. Because we have a very special guest once again. And I can barely see him. I can see his trophy better than him, which <laughs> trophy's a lot prettier than he is anyway. I but I can barely see him in the frame. No, I got yeah. him. I got him. I he, got him. He's over there in the corner. We, he's hiding a yeah. little bit. We can only see half of Jeff, but that's that's normal. You know, he likes <laughs> to hide half his face anyway. Um, all right, so got Mr. New in the house. We'll get to that in one second. So we are wrapping up. Guys, it's been three, three weeks. Three four? weeks. Three to four. Three weeks since we've been back in the studio. Right. Um, our apologies, as always, but we've had tournaments. Uh, the season's getting underway. Um, Thrift's getting ready to go down to fish the Red Crest in Texas. We're getting ready to leave for our second the elite frozen tournament. The tundra of Texas. Well, yeah. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit better by the time y'all get there. I hope so. Uh, we're, we'll head out oh, Sunday, oh, roughly, oh. to Loudon and Teleco for our second elite oh, yeah. series event. It, what, are you over there? You're just over there mumbling. People can hear I, you I when lost, you're talking to yourself. I lost my feed. Like, I made it go away, but I got it back. <laughs> okay. uh, Mike you Harris don't said. Don't worry about me. You know I got this under control. Uh, yeah, that's that's the problem. Uh, Mike Harris said that that I sound strange. Something's wrong with my mic. It's because <laughs> the low it's end. It's not the mic. <laughs> the low end knob <laughs> might have got turned in transit, but I just fixed it, so it should be good. Okay, cool. Jeff said he just fixed it, tight. Mike. Let us know. We don't test anything here. We just throw it together. <laughs> throw it in the truck and go live. Uh, props to Jeff because he had to grab all this stuff and move it back to the studio today. Great job, Jeff. Last Great minute, job. just so we could have a show for y'all tonight. So, um, all right. Theo Corcoran said, no, Brian is a handsome young man. Which Brian are we talking with? Oh, he must be talking about new. Well, he's talking about the he's definitely not young. Of course. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. Um, all right, no. so special giveaway tonight, by the way. Um, if anybody doesn't know, and we're gonna go, we're gonna tell that story here in just a minute. Pulse Fish Lures signed on as a sponsor of our show this year. Okay, they also signed on as a sponsor of mine for the 2021 Elite Series season, and they also grabbed up Mister New, and they are his title sponsor for Indeed. the 2021 season. Indeed, and I'm uh, very, very proud and thankful. For, and I'd say that's a pretty good so, grab. Tell us that story, how that came about. Yeah, that's, that's a good story. Yeah, let so, us know. So, uh, whatever Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday before we leave to go to where we uh, St. John's River. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Hold on, here we go again. No, uh, yeah. St. John's River. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm at the wrap shop. Everything you know is crazy. This short, short. Uh, Two days season. before he leaves, he's at the wrap shop. So yes, I mean it's just the way <laughs> things work out. I'm not a last minuter, but it's the way it worked out. Last minuter. That's a uh, t-shirt, Jeff. There you Chris go. Chris Lindahl, please uh, make a note of that T-shirt. <laughs> Last minute. He's, he's cataloging all Can of the T-shirts. Can I tell my story? Ideas. Yes, go yeah. ahead. Sorry, no. Of course. No. So, we, I, I, apologies. Seriously. I'm at the wrap shop um, <laughs> because it's it's going to be done this day, uh, whatever it was, Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm putting on my new live scope bracket uh, that we just finished up. And, you know, I said, oh, he's got this side done. I'll take a picture of it and post it. Um, we go to lunch. And I get a phone call from Mr. Todd Goad. We were at lunch. I was with the guys. I didn't Tell answer. Tell them who Todd Goad is. Todd Goad is the owner of Pulse Fish. A lot of them know, but we just and, didn't. And um, so I said, well, I'll call him back when I get after, uh, get back from lunch. And Todd, I don't think I've told you that story, but that's what how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we get so, back. So, and, and we get back. He had and he to calls again. Bur- what were you having? A burrito? <laughs> uh, burger, actually. A burger. All right. He, had yeah, to finish. he was, was busy burgers. eating his burger. <laughs> he didn't take Todd's uh, call because he was eating a hamburger. Yeah. He said, <laughs> so I just think I'll call him back after lunch. Well, we get back to the shop, and it, Todd calls again. I said, 
I'll go ahead and answer. It's probably important. And <laughs> <laughs> plus, it is Mr. Todd. <laughs> Two times is important. So. so I answer it. He says, hey, I see you don't have a title sponsor. I said, you would be right. He said, you need one. I said, you would be right. He said, I want to be one. I said, I like it. Let's talk. <laughs> and it was very short and brief. And um, a done deal. I said, Mikey, whoa, hold up. Don't put that on. <laughs> Pull that off. And I will uh, tell you what to do in a second. So, Well, you had, a, you had a brand new fishing logo that you posted on your Instagram that was already yeah. on the rack. Like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like that's, that's, that's what. It had to be removed. So, yeah, so yeah. they had to remove that <laughs> logo. Yeah. yeah, so we re the other side of the boat wasn't finished. Um, so we <laughs> removed my logo from the other side that was finished. <laughs> and had to come back the next day like, because logos coming. had to be printed and finished up. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm, um, you know, very blessed and fortunate for that. And, Gonna have um, some new jerseys here soon, too, I hear. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I sure hope that it's here before the next event. That's out of my hands. I did everything I could do. I sure hope it is, though. Hey, <laughs> but at least it all worked out. <laughs> exactly. Right. I couldn't exactly. ask for a Better no, it, it is plan so, to work out. Todd so Go good. did say lunch is more important than a title sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have to eat. It was a good. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good burger, wasn't it? Was it, it was. like a Five Guys or like a Burger King? No, nah, it was like a legit homemade burger. Oh, where was this? Yeah, I had just a hole in the wall. The best kind. Oh yeah, okay. the good greasy ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, so yeah, so congrats on the title sponsor. <clears throat> Uh, this year, obviously, Pulse Fish, great company, great guys. They, they they are a sponsor of the show, and they are sponsoring our giveaway tonight. So what we did for our giveaway. Pretty much taking over the world, it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> Pulse Fish, they're everywhere. I mean, everywhere. So Pulse Fish is actually doing a special giveaway, and it is News Pick 3. Mm -hmm. So it's his three top baits for this time of year. All right, it consists yep. of some 8-ounce Pulse jigs, some quarter-ounce Pulse jigs, and some Tennessee shad-colored swim bait heads. The new swim bait head they've got out is pretty legit. Um so we'll have that at the end of the show. We've got a good trivia question. And, you know, what I want to get into tonight, uh, it, any questions that you have for new, shoot them through the feed. We'll make sure to address them. Be sure to address them. Uh, but, you know, something that a lot of people don't know, well, a lot of people probably do know it by now, um, but new story, his background. And Thrift and I and Jeff uh, were talking about this a little bit before the show. Um, you know, I knew you've done a ton of interviews. I'm sure you're going to do a ton more this week. You're going to be really busy. Uh, you've done a lot of podcasts. We appreciate you coming on here. But I, I did tell him when I called him, I said, I don't care if you do any other shows this week, but you have to do this one. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. Thrift and my show. Yeah. I said, you have to come to Thrift and Aries show. I said, period. I said, because we just have so much history together. Y'all are my Jeff original. Y'all are yeah, my original professional friends so R original professional <laughs> the friends. original professional friends OG is that a thing? <laughs> ogps and he called me old i earlier. mean you you are you're 10 years older than me i'm 41 i'm, I'm close old. to being old cool. <laughs> but your not, back's hurt mine ain't i'm in between True. i'm i'm getting in the conversation <laughs> i'm not getting in this conversation i've done more manual labor than you matt's got like more gray weeks. hair so i mean <clears throat> okay i'm probably younger i don't probably younger. I don't, I don't either. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. I've heard stories. <laughs> do we have? Are you going to be here on your birthday? Uh, when is your birthday? The second, of March second. When is my birthday? The Are second of show Tuesday. God, I should know that. The second of Tuesday is Matt's birthday. Second I will not be in North Carolina. Of Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so well, I asked you when you said the second, and I said what month, I mean, and you said you, Tuesday. I mean, the second so, means. Oh no! Whenever you just say a number, it means the next month, like the second. Oh, I didn't know that. The next second that comes. Okay, that'd be March. All right. You going to be here or not? Are y'all done? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be around on my birthday. Correct. We yeah. doing a show I think I'll birthday? be here as well. Plan on it. We'll have a happy really? birthday Plan match show. I, hopefully, I'm here as well. Well, if it's my birthday, I don't know if I'll be here or not. Pence, you going to throw me a party? We'll throw you a party. Yes. Do you think we should throw Matt a birthday party? Is this the 40th, right? Duh. Yeah. Oh, this is the 40th. Mm -hmm. I thought it was 50th. <laughs> <laughs> News got jokes. Uh, all right, so back to uh, serious stuff. Serious right. stuff. We don't get real serious on this show very often. But <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> we, we, in all seriousness, New has, has come a long way. We were bragging on you before you got here because we've known you, and, and we said that, that between Thrift and I, we've probably known you longer than anybody in this industry as far as fishing buddies, right? I would yeah. say. And that dates back to... 
15 years ago. I don't know. 13, a long time. 14 or 15 years ago, probably. Yeah, y'all actually met before me and New met. Yeah. Correct. And, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll say something funny about that in a minute. But um, so <laughs> New and I met uh, years ago, and, and, and you know, we, we met – we, we got paired together in a tournament, basically. And we just kind of hit it off from there. And, and knew I, I knew from the second New got in the back of my boat, the first time he got in the back of my boat, this kid, I was like, this kid. You know, you could tell. When a co-hanger gets in the back of your boat, you can tell real quick, do they have it or oh, they don't yeah. have it? Um, can they fish? Are their mechanics good? Are there, are, are there, do they adapt well? Do they change throughout the day? You know, or do they just try the same thing that you're doing all day and just hope to catch one? You know, But right off the bat, I knew the kid had some talent, and I knew he probably had a bright future, and he was going to be something to be reckoned with one day. And, and obviously the proofs in the pudding he's won everything there is to win at every other level and now he's won an elite series event also so yeah i mean we got what's he got he got an angler of the year already he's got an, an elite AOI, series win. a joint aoi in the bass opens right that was an overall aoi yeah that was the overall the like, overall which is even harder to do he's yeah he's got a bass open win he's won the ray scott national ray championship scott national championship have you won a bfl won a bfl regional as a co-angler I won a regional, yeah. Won a regional. Yeah, he won a BFL. BFL regional as a boater, right? Yeah, this yeah. all is boater. He's got a ton of co angling in like the last three years too, since yeah. 2019. Yeah, you've probably made more money. I know you've made more money than most pros. Yes, I would in say. the last couple seasons fishing at a non-pro level. Then I mean, there's no doubt the Ray Scott paid 100 grand. Regionals pay 60, 70 grand. Um, you know, bit. you you've anyway very accomplished angler. And as soon as he came out on the elites. You know, I know everybody out there always has mixed emotions about rookies, but this kid ain't no rookie, and that's obvious. He's nah. He's been around the game for a long time, and he's a student of the game. And he puts – and I'm guilty of not doing this, but and but thrift's, thrift's the same way or was the same way. He's getting kind of old now. But he, uh, <laughs> oh, God, here we go again right, with this old stuff. Going. But <laughs> he, he has dedicated his life to the sport of bass fishing. That's all this kid ever lived and breathed, and obviously it's showing. And, you know, I, I, I want to congratulate you personally. I know we've talked on the phone and I've sent you text, but you can be overwhelmed by all that stuff because of – You want me to move so you don't hug it out? When, when no, you, no, no, we're good. good. I, I, yeah. Look, he said, I was going to give him a hug, but he's like, no, I'm good, man. <laughs> he don't want to give me a hug. But I'm trying to brag on him, man. Give me a minute. Oh, give me a minute here. Um, you'll have your chance, you know. I'm just you, listening. You could, you, could, you could tell people about how many fish new found for you all them tournaments you've oh, won yeah. over the years on tour. He's <laughs> over chuckling. I, I have I've got a good story about the first time we went fishing together. All right, so that's that, but that's that's what I want to get into. I want to talk more about News Roots, where he comes from, just your life in general, dude, because you've had a lot of ups and downs. Oh yeah, and and obviously you're at a high point in your career. You've been on an uptrend for like the past two or three years. But tell everybody your backstory, like back, I mean, back to your first tournaments and how you grew up and and where your roots really really started, and all the guys around here that that have have been a part of that, you know, and 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 watched you move up through the ranks and 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 done as well as you, as you have. So like fishing, just in general, goes back, you know, to when I was couldn't even walk, like. I remember the first fish I ever caught was off my dock on, in the South Fork River on Lake Wiley. It was a brim. And it's crazy because I remember this. It was on a night crawler, and I threw it out, and I was reeling it in as fast as I could, and that's when I caught it. <laughs> I mean, you were I, winding a night crawler in, and that's when you yeah, caught it. Yeah, I mean, that's I remember those details. But so me and my brothers, Gene and Michael, um, we just fished all the time off up here. It didn't matter what we caught, but we just were fishing. And then, um, I think 2000, and, I don't know what's going on back here. They're rudely interrupting you over well, here. I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll no, this is what we're dealing with. Yeah. No, so, you continue. Anyway, so there was a tackle store, Earl's Bait and Tackle. Um, really good. Is Earl still home. living now? Yeah, I talked to him today. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I started hanging out there. You know, it's a tackle store. A lot of, a lot of oh, local yeah. fishermen come and hang out and you know, I was the little kid that hung out and bugged the piss out of everybody, and everybody uh, tried to get them to take me fishing. And you know, I was a like seven, eight year old kid, so you can't just pick a seven year old kid up and take them fishing when you don't even know them. But uh, there was a few guys that actually did, and and I don't remember what grade it was, but I mean, I was kind of a wild child and uh, got in some trouble at school, and and. Uh, so we, you, I don't know if they still do it, but like the school would provide mentors for these wild kids. And so I got a mentor and it actually wound up being my preacher 
from my church. So, you know, he kind of helped straighten me out a little bit. And he introduced me to Ken Curtis, which was another guy from our church, and he bass fished. And so we started fishing together, and, and that's where the bass fishing kind of got a little bit more strong you know towards bass fishing instead of just fishing in general then i my first job when i was in middle school was at earl's sweeping the floors taking out the trash after school and uh, just kind of went from there uh me and earl's son ej fished our first tournament together we sucked so bad but it was my first tournament and it was fun <laughs> um, when i was 16 so you have to be 16 to fish a flw event and so I fished the VFL at Lake Norman when I was 16 and like four days old. And I finished 21st, got $161. And so it was a $100 entry fee. I make $50 a week. I made $61 in eight, eight hours. hours. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like it just went from there. I met Roger Pope and, uh, through the BFLs and, and you know guys from this area know who roger is and he's you know he he hasn't fished as much the last handful of years but um he is i promise you if he had the time and you know was younger he could be one of the best there is i promise you younger there he goes with old and, jokes again. <laughs> well heck i'm 30 now old, i'll be 31 in a couple of days yeah, and roger's like in his 40s Okay. Well, I didn't call him old, but <laughs> that's pretty much what you did. <laughs> I guess I kind of did, but sorry, Roger. I was not calling you. Continue, old. Mr. New. So, you know, Roger was the first person that was actually extremely talented that, you know, kind of took me under his wing and started teaching me. He taught me how to learn. And taught you, know, you how to learn. I mean, that sounds crazy, but he did. Oh, he taught me how to learn and how, what to do. I was trying to absorb that. And then... Um, Matt's learning tonight. You know... I'm uh, learning Mark, how to learn. Um, you know, I think you were, like, not far along behind that, Matt. And um, I learned, like, a couple things from Matt. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember what they were, but... <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh, uh, I knew that was coming. Oh, that's funny. And you then, like on him right now or something? Mm. <laughs> Uh, but uh, then there was this one time at the barn party. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 that's no. the story we want. Listen, to listen, no. the barn party story. No, right, there's no barn party no, story. No, no, <laughs> no. Nope. Hey, we no were all kids once. The door, Matt's walking through. <laughs> we it. Can't, you the one started. <laughs> Proceed, so, no, sir. So, so <laughs> new, move on. New and I, new and I were actually really close buddies for a long, long, long time, and we're still friends. We've just drifted apart because we've been fishing different stuff for the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> we still chat and things like that but so we we've been on we used to deer hunt a lot together too not a lot but we deer hunted some together back when it was cool and we back when it was cool <laughs> See, that's what i'm talking about the guys so eat up with bass fishing he's like there's no other sport in the world other than bass fishing i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because obviously this and is now he hunts like me just for the record yeah just for the record <laughs> um but new new came and he uh he no, i'm not even gonna tell that that's not appropriate no it's, it's, it's not, not it's, it's really it's not fishing it was just a joke it's not so, <laughs> so hey hey man he was he was just a kid just doing what young men try to do that's all there was to at it. barn so, parties at barn parties yeah. so we'll leave it at that <laughs> we'll leave it at that all right I'm so a married man continue now. well you you were this is 15 Way, years ago yeah. 10 years ago <laughs> When you were 13 or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. In all seriousness, so I know we, we, we met, and it wasn't long after that that you started traveling fishing FLW. 2012. 2012 was your first year fishing yep. FLW. Yep. And Brian and I had both had some experience as a co-angler, and I think you took the right path. And, and, and knew, a lot of people don't know it, but knew fished uh, co-angler events at, at every level for, what, eight, seven, eight years? Yes. A long, oh, I started fishing BFLs as a co-angler. 17, I guess. Well, okay. BFL's well, yeah. 2006. So, yeah, so about 10 years. You had about a decade under your belt yeah. as a co-hanger. So, New had a lot of experience, been with a lot of good fishermen, and had a lot of success as a co-angler. And, uh, and, and I think that was – I think you did it the right way. I think there's a lot of guys – Myself included, and I had an eye opener. My rookie year is I fished two years as a co-anger on FLW tour, and I was like, you know, this is this this is good. I think I can do this. I jumped yeah. head, you know, 
head first my rookie year and then I had I had I had a, a rough season as a rookie I really did and it was a, it was a big learning curve for me but I think you you took your time um you took all the right steps and and you obviously had a lot of success but um you know after that you you fished with me I, what two years maybe three years something, something like that yeah. he traveled and fished with me and, and practiced with me as a co-angler and um and then he he met this guy named Brian Thrift who I have no idea to this day why he even wanted to talk to this guy. Me neither, especially he, after the first day we fished mm-hmm. together. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, I, you remember that at the, I, the Forest Wood Cup at Lanier? When we practiced, the first day we practiced yeah. together? I'll let Thrift jump into this story, <laughs> I, but basically I mean, I remember he it. me. Oh, yeah, you talk about the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. He, he kicked me to the curb to fish with this guy, and then I'll let Thrift take it from there. <laughs> so, uh, so the first time, like me and you had known each other for a while, but we had never really fished together. And the the first time we, I would like together. to say that he just used me to get the thrift. <laughs> no. I mean, I, that's my that's no. I mean, that's my story. I'm sticking so, to it. So anyway, is 2012 the Forestwood Cup was at Lake Lanier, and <laughs> New had qualified for a co angler, and I qualified for the boater side, and the New was traveling with another angler at the time, and that angler didn't make the championship. So New, we talked and we said, well, yeah, you can practice with me and. The first day of practice, this was back before they had a time limit on practice. I really like that. And, I wish uh, we didn't have a time You could practice limit. 24 well, hours practice a day night, you? if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. So, um, the, my boy, Blue. <laughs> I'm just making it more visible. So, the, the very first day of practice for that cup, the first time me and New went fishing, <laughs> he met me at the hotel at, uh, what was it, like, like 1.30? two yeah. o'clock in the morning we put the boat in the water at three o'clock that morning and we did not put it on the trailer until three o'clock the next morning <laughs> that is straight up <laughs> fact and hey i tell you what like and we this spent is 24 this is, straight hours on the water this is straight truth right here like that day that day right there don't get me wrong now i was hardcore <laughs> and i was all about busting my tail before that but that day said all right that's what i gotta do <laughs> and to this day, that's what I got to do. You you can't – you've got to figure out what works for you. But you've got – you can't – if you get beat, get beat because you got beat. Don't get – don't beat yourself. Don't don't get beat because you got outworked. Right, right. Yes. And, and, and that's good that you, that you take that attitude right into your rookie season. And, and with your experience, people think Brian knew the rookie on the elites, blah, 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 blah. You're not an elite. I mean, you're not an elite rookie mentally, no doubt. The only mind. thing that makes him a rookie is nobody knew his name until last week. <laughs> no, the people people still well, know this kid's name. I mean, you know name. what I mean. Like, right, the right. The mass, the mass fishing correct, public. Correct, correct. I mean, the reach, yeah, the reach, what, what you reached last week. Everybody that beyond. really followed fishing probably knew. Correct. Um, so You know th- what I mean. There's a lot of questions building up here. We got almost 500 viewers tonight. And, I'm still uh, not getting questions. I think my feed's messed up. Your phone is doing what my phone would do in the other studio. It would freeze the, the comments. But I want to go into... How do I get out of that? I can't help you there. That's it. Just refresh it, maybe. So I'm going to go into some of the uh, questions. No, we, got a, we, we just broke 500, by the way. So we just we got a bunch of questions, uh, some that are relating to the tournament. Um, but news news history, he kind of gave hey, you I a little rundown. Uh, are you still talking to yourself? People can hear you when you say well, stuff. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Jeff's over here like, what just else? Scott Fells, I completely <laughs> forgot about those feather trebles. <laughs> oh, my bad. All right. Oh, okay. oh, he's not the only one you owe feather trebles. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> uh, all right. That, um, back to, I'm going to back way up, get some questions. Anthony Holmes, uh, thanks for bearing with us. Uh, he said congrats <laughs> to Brian New. Um, do you think, this is to New, do you think that North Carolina anglers get the respect of their peers on tour like California, Florida, Texas, and Alabama? Um, that's just a, a general question he's asking you. I, I don't know. How can I, they not? I really There's a blue trophy sitting right here <laughs> that came back to the state of North Carolina. Um, I, I, I don't mean, really pay attention to stuff. I well, mean, I well, really I mean, don't. You're respected, and if you're not, you definitely are now. But the, to to his point, um, you know, I, I I will argue the fact that there's only a handful of states that consistently put out uh, 
consistent pros. pros. Yeah. I mean, guys that actually can sustain a career at the professional fishing level. And North Carolina, to me, is at the top of the, is, is close to the top of that list. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. you, I mean, you go all the way back to the old school crankers, Fritz, yeah, Fritz and, and, and David uh, Wright and all those mm-hmm. guys that really yeah. Coble. pioneered yeah. the whole cranking deal. Yeah, well, you got yeah. Hank Parker, you got yeah. um, Hank uh, Parker. Guy Aker, you got a lot of guys yep. that have sustained careers as professional. And North Carolina is not the size of Texas or California or Florida. You got to remember that too. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think North Carolina has a lot of really, really good anglers. Um, obviously, you know why? I think I know why. Well, I've said, I've, I've said, we've I, talked about this on the show. I tell you why I think. I tell you why I think. Then you go. All right. Yeah, I know you said it first, but I'm going first. Go ahead. I <laughs> think. Go ahead. I think it's cause open of, new mic night. I it's think because the fishing sucks so bad. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That's my exact <laughs> I'm word. Serious. I, that was my exact it word. It makes you adapt. The yeah. diversity of our lakes. Well, and that goes That's back awesome. to the the, the, lo- the local competition. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Local competition. <laughs> the the fact that our lakes don't take 25 pounds to win on every week and 30 guys don't have over 20 pounds right you know you have to grind to catch them more often than not you have to adapt the conditions more often than not and you got to cover a lot of water right so a lot of our lakes around here and y'all can agree or disagree are very conditional lakes you have to mm-hmm. adapt on the fly constantly in yep. order to catch them. Um, it's not like you can go find them in a brush pile on Friday and go catch their butt right. in that yeah. same brush pile on it's Saturday like um yeah so it's it's a great state to um learn yeah, really hone your skills as a pattern fisherman and a versatile fisherman and learn a lot. We have lakes that have shallow, dirty water. We have current. We have clear lakes. We have... We got pretty much everything but grass. But grass. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, Sharon Harris has grass. Um, but so, grass fish are easy anyway, so... It, that yeah. <laughs> Hold that I thought. Love grass I've seen fishing. some of my finishes in Florida, along with some of yours, and they all have... They Florida all have grass, grass don't count. <laughs> Florida grass don't count. <laughs> now, this guy's got anywhere from 150th to a first place finish in Florida. So, if that tells you anything, um, I don't know that any of us know what the, what the heck we're doing. Or what the <laughs> I, don't I don't know. News track record's probably better than both of ours. He's won an Open at Toho. He's just won his first Elite Tournament at St. John's, which is a title fishery. Yeah, and then he's won, at, won a regional at Seminole. And he won a regional at Seminole. Yeah, which finished is basically third at a, Seminole last year. That's yeah. basically a grass Florida fishery. Oh, it's that. Me. I mean, yeah. part of, like... It's all high drill. A hundredth of it's in Florida. All right. A good question from David Prince here I want to address. So um, we talked about this a little bit. We need to touch on, obviously, the tournament um, somewhat. I know you've done this a lot on on some different podcasts and interviews. But um, I was was interested because you and I talked on the phone. You were on the way back the other day. And – you know, the area you caught him in is the area that, that my roommate, Canterbury, has caught him in really well the last two years. Well, <laughs> come to find out, he did catch a three-pounder there the first day of the event. But I don't think I, – I talked to Scott, and he got he said he got a little sidetracked with a bunch of bedfish in one specific area. And, you know, you told me. You said, look, I got, like, one shell bar that had a few fish on it, and I had two bites in this area, in this pad area, in practice. And I said, you know, the heck with it. If this doesn't work, I'm going to go down there and explore that a little bit more. And then you landed on the area that, to me, is the sweet spot of Florida, meaning this river system, we could fish, what, 60-something miles of it, roughly? No, no, it's way more Well, than that. right, but realistically, <clears throat> I think the furthest anybody went was Gary Klaus, and no. he was two hours away. Hold on, you're wrong. You can go 42 miles to Jacksonville, <clears throat> and you can go – it's 43 miles I get to that. the break wall. I get that, but I'm talking about in actual competitive water. So water water you can fish is one thing, but water well, where yeah. you can compete in is another, right? Okay. So the furthest anybody went was about two hours south, Yeah. Um, which was Klaus. And a, lot, and a lot of that has to do with run times. People don't realize – the St. John's River down through Astra in those areas, there's a speed limit because of the manatee deal. Mm-hmm. Um, 30, plus, it, plus idle zone. It's 30 mile an hour. 30 mile an hour. That's it's right. It's 43 miles from blast off to the break walls where you got to idle. It's a seven minute idle. Right. And it's 30 miles an hour. You got one 11 minute idle. You got one about four minute idle. And one about twelve minute idle. Right, and one thing that's very that's that was very idle. important. Yeah, <laughs> one thing that was very important in this tournament was time management, and <laughs> that's what the first day, which was a critical day, and I know you had twelve pounds. Yeah, the twelve first day. Even. Okay, so and that doesn't sound like a lot, but that first day was we a, had a tournament. Three, and a, three hour, fifteen minute fall delay. Three hour yeah. and fifteen. So, minutes. How many hours did y'all actually get on the water the first day? It, okay, so it was four hours and forty five minutes. You checked in at three. First flight checked in at three. Okay. Based so that, on your run, nobody was running closer than now. 
I personally actually caught an audible and stayed really close to keep right. the line wet to try to catch five. I knew how critical a limit would be. And, and a lot of guys that caught them on day two and possibly day three if they made it did not catch a limit on day one. Right. And that was a big, big deal. New was able to solidify a 12-pound sack on day one, and that carried him through the event. Had it not been for that limit – you know, who knows what would have happened. Well, so, he still won by 10 pounds, but um, – but, but hold on, though. I don't make – here, so this is very critical. Everybody talks about your key factors in this, and, and the shell bars don't sound very, very critical because I didn't weigh in a lot of weight off of it. But I had three bass when I got back from Aster the first day. The first day. I had three. So that saved your day. <clears throat> I stopped – I had 17 minutes, stopped on a shell bar, and I'm probably six, five, six miles from the ramp. I stop on a shell bar – and make 12 casts and catch two fish on right. a Berkeley war pig. So without those two fish, I don't make the final day cut. Yeah, that's, right. a, bit, that's a big, big deal. Um, <clears throat> so back to David Prince's question, what I was interested in, and you and I talked about it on the phone, talking about that 60, 70, 80 miles of river, when you're dealing with the river system in Florida, those fish were in completely different stages of the mm-hmm. spawn depending on where you were on Absolutely. the system. Absolutely. And landing on the spot that you landed on, was the, the sweet spot, and what I meant by that was it's where the fish kept coming to. It's mm-hmm. where they were reloading every day. It's where the females were pulling into. And I know you said, you know, I didn't catch any big ones. Well, by St. John's standards, you didn't catch any big ones, but you were catching limits of four-pounders yeah. every day. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that was that was the main deal. Except but, for the last day when he caught limits of five-pounders. Limits of five-pounders, yeah, <laughs> correct. Um, I had a four-eight in there. That, well, there you go. <laughs> David Brent Average said, five said, pounds. But what we'll was funny, of, of all the fish that he caught, he never caught a seven, eight, nine pounder. I know it blew my mind, and, and that that was weird to me because when you're doing what he was doing, yeah, you usually get I was, one of those that was giant bites. correct. If you're going to get a giant, um, bite. he said this guy was a marshal with Keith Combs on day two. Okay, David Prince. He said he was on the opposite bank across from you. I he seen said, him. "Did you figure out anything in specific? Uh, obviously, you were flipping pads uh, with a soft plastic stick worm." Um, couple different weight sizes i think i read yep, yep. Uh, did you ever figure out kind of a pattern within the pattern because flipping pads down there's a big deal it's what i was doing the whole event i was doing it on a completely different section mm-hmm. but um and i used a five sixteenths and a quarter i think i, saw, I read you used a quarter. i use a yeah. i use a one eighth and a quarter and the uh, last day i went up eighth. went to win when the wind got pretty rough the last day i went up to a five sixteenths was there anything that you dialed in uh, as far as the the pads that they were on or a pattern within <clears> a pattern like david's asking um, like that, was it point pads no or? no now here well i say no so you have a <laughs> isolated pad which is one pad and then you have what i call um uh what's the word a i had a fancy pads? word so you got isolated pad <laughs> which is one you pad <laughs> you got thick pads which is a whole bunch of pads and then you got like more sporadic pads which is a lot of pads but they're not super tight and let me tell you, this is why I don't like – there's a couple of reasons I don't like those big groups of pads. One, you've got 10,000 targets. There's no way you can hit all those targets. Right. Two, it's a lot harder to fish because fishing pads is not just throw over there, not just flip over there. It's way more technical than that, and we can get to that in a minute. But <clears throat> three, it's a lot, e- lot harder to get a fish out of it. And four – which is the most important is they're not on those pads to be on those pads. They're on them pads to make love. And <laughs> it was loving pads. Yes. And they need <laughs> love got them caught. <laughs> love. They need you need light penetration. <laughs> so, I mean, a, a fish cannot spawn under a mat because there's no light penetration. So, if you got just <clears> a complete mat of lily pads, they're not going to spawn there because they don't have light penetration. So, I was staying away from the you know just vast tons of pads i was i was fishing the smaller groups and the and the isolated all right so so, yeah and and i agree with that 100 percent. and one thing (laughs) one thing that i which i don't know where i I, obviously i screwed up because i didn't catch five pounders like new did but i was in i was 20 miles north of you roughly running the same type of deal looking for the same type of thing those broken up pads and um running a pattern up and down the river and getting a lot of bites i kept catching buck bass for whatever reason the whole the whole tournament i very rarely ever got a female to bite um but like new said i want you to go into detail because you you obviously know as, as good as anybody when you're fishing pads in florida there's a very specific way to fish those pads when fish are spawning on them and talk through the presentation and how you fish your worm when you're fishing those pads and if you catch a buck what do you do 
All right, so like I said, like the whole reason those fish are on those pads. Now, I'm not saying you'll never catch a fish on a pad that's not spawning, but right. that time of year, they're there to spawn. And the reason is, Florida, there's a ton of soft bottom. It's And a fish needs a hard bottom. It needs something hard to spawn on. So that's why they use the root balls of the pads. So if take that one isolated pad away. We're going to talk about the more scattered out pads where there's, you know, you've got room in between them. So I'm going to make a cast. And before I make that cast, I'm going to look and I'm going to wait until the wind or whatever it is, I can get the right angle to make a cast. And I want my line from me to my bait 100% straight. I want my line in the water. I don't want it going over a pad. I don't want it laying on anything. I want my line in the water straight from me, straight to my bait. One, it's a more natural fall. Two, you can feel a lot better. You're going to get you're not going to get hung up uh every all of that and you can the presentation is just better like you you don't miss anything in that cast they may be <clears throat> anywhere from one to ten targets in that cast meaning a root ball or a bed yeah um, so you're dragging the worm you're not yeah. just sitting there shaking that's it. staying in contact with the bottom yeah. is what Correct. yeah is yeah. very very important yeah so i um robbie die i'll call you back uh <laughs> He he did this. Did he not do this last time? I'm pretty time? sure. Yeah. He did this last time. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think he called me last time. When yeah. I'm dragging that, <laughs> when I'm dragging that Zlinky around, or whatever my bait may be, uh, the Zoom five inch black and blue Zoom Zlinky was it was what I did all my damage with last week. Um, <clears throat> I'm you know it's super slow, and now I'm a runner and a gunner. I want to pull up and make three casts and rock and roll and go to the next one, but. I can slow. I can go slow and steady when I need to, yes. and in this situation, you have to. So you, you're visioning those beds being next to that pad, yeah. And you're and you're just you're just getting that mental picture of those beds next yeah. to that pad, and you're just slowly. You're yep. pretty much you're blind bed fishing. Yes. Like in in Brian's mind, he knows yep. there's a bed there, absolutely, and he's fishing his bait like he that bed's there and that fish is sitting there looking mm -hmm. at it and he's trying to make it 100 percent, 100 percent. so <clears throat> i'm i make my cast i make sure my line you know sometimes you might have to kind of look goofy and do this or that or <laughs> reach out here whatever you got to do but you got to get your line to lay right and when when it's slick it's not as hard it's not super easy but it's not as hard but when it's windy or you got boat waves or whatever it may be it's a lot more tricky and um that's one reason you have multiple weight sizes um so you make that cast and you're just feeling it's all about the feel you can feel a little some sometimes you'll feel a rough spot where they've you know fanned out and made a bed you'll feel the root ball and sometimes if you got a good rod good fluorocarbon good tungsten weight you can feel good enough and you can even feel a little depression and when you feel one of those three things, you know you're in the sweet spot. And you picture in your mind, even though that you don't know it, in your mind you know that you're sitting there on a fish's bed and you're trying to make that fish bite. Don't get in a hurry. Let it sit there. Let it do its thing. And then, you know, come on, pull it on up, get to the next sweet spot and do the same thing. And another really critical thing is I promise you I'll catch fish doing that that other people are – and I'm, I'm not. I don't mean this being cocky, but I'm telling you, I'm catching fish that other people will shake off and never know it. So pay attention, and and you don't. A lot of times, you don't feel the bite. Um, you can just tell there's something different. And sometimes they won't swim. I mean, a lot of times they don't swim off. But um, another thing is pay attention where your bait is, because I couldn't tell you how many times that this happened. The second day, if I caught 25 fish which I know I did catch at least that many. If I caught 25 fish, 22 of them, the fish bit, I jerked, missed it, put a new bait. Actually, I set that rod down, got my other rod up, and threw it over there, and I caught that fish. I don't know why, but that's the way it happened. But without me knowing, yeah, like I mean, if you fishing. got 100, yeah, I mean, I mean that's just if you fish. got 100 pads in front of you, you need to remember exactly where that was because if you throw that pad, that fish is not going to bite over there on that pad. Um, so pay attention to that as well. That uh, 
I, I want to go back to what you said about a direct a direct line to your bait because I did an article about frog fishing uh, for Bassmasters. It's been a couple months ago. Here we go with the frog again. No, 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 no. This ain't got nothing to do. It has nothing to do with leg shortage. It's, uh, it has nothing to do with trimming legs. I had to throw it in there. I didn't I even mention that in the article. In I did not even mention that in the article. You'd be proud of me. And I said, I mean, I could have said, like, Thrift's an idiot. You know, he thinks legs should be the same length. And blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just kidding. So, but back, like, frog fishing, for instance, really anything that requires a, a a hook set more or less like a, a a good hook set <clears throat> having a direct line to your bait is a big deal that's oh, like yeah. throwing skipping a frog under a big mm-hmm. overhang with a big bow in your line yeah. in yeah. the wind yeah. i mean yeah. that's like the biggest no-no in fishing like yeah. people wonder why they miss fish or they lose fish and exactly what he just told you has a big th- that it's a big reason why people lose fish or they miss them or they don't get a good hook in them or whatever it may be um i got a question for you because um i did it throughout the event caught multiple fish off the same root ball how many times did you catch did you catch a buck and throw back in there and catch a female mm-hmm. take a guess oh uh, well, i'm you going were going with, i'm going with never mm-hmm. i'm gonna go I'm with none uh, <laughs> yeah. since, the, since you gave away the answer <laughs> uh, yeah but, i did get, i just pulled a bat on that one <laughs> all right well <laughs> but, okay so, no i never did so I let did. me rephrase that how many pads did you catch fish off of multiple times throughout the tournament i don't think any I swear, Judging by I his weights you. over everybody else, he was catching the biggest one first. I really – like, if I caught one there, I I promise you I, I threw back there. Right. No, I believe that you did. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I promise you. But, I mean, more often than not uh, – uh, not more often than not, but often – I know. Times, I agree. That, yeah, and there's there's pairs of them sitting absolutely. on those pad balls. And, um, and I'm wondering, you know, you got to tell – and we, we had an interesting conversation because – as good as news weights were, and obviously he, he walked away with the title um, with ease with 10 pounds or, or whatever it was. He, yeah, but, you know, he, he said something to me on the phone, and I, he's like and, – and I'm thinking this is just new being a sandbagger and, like, he's just, like, thrift <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know, what's funny is I never caught a big one. And, and by St. John's standards, he never caught a big one. Yeah. Like, five-pounders, four-pounders, those are good quality St. John bass, but he never had an eight, nine, or ten-pounder. Yeah, and I'm was... wondering if a lot of those four-pounders were maybe buck bass or maybe the cycle in that area had a lot of three- to five-pound bucks in it. Um, I mean, what do you think? Do you think a lot of them? Because I was looking at some of your fish and some of the pictures. Some of your, obviously, you're holding up your better fish. And some of them look pretty beat up like they've been there for a while. Some of them look like buckfish to me. Um, there's no way to prove that for Honestly, me Honestly, anyway. 100% honesty, I didn't pay that much attention to yeah. them. Right. Listen, I mean, one thing I, really I want didn't. to talk about before we go any further is I know you talked about the bite being so hard to detect, like having yeah. to watch your bait and catching fish that most people would shake off. Go through your rod setup and everything you were using, like to help you with that extra sensitivity. So, oh, it, oh, oh, he had to he did, Fitzgerald guys over exactly, here teaming up. Exactly. Uh, shameless sponsor Fitchy. plug. Take hey, one. You got. You got. He, he said. He even he even finished no, the sentence off to help you with that extra sensitivity. No, I mean it's Continue. it's true. Like it really. I mean, is. just we just think. It, just, no cargo just, shorts. Just, Afcos. Just think if Matt would have caught the fish, he shook off. Here we exactly. go. So, All right, here. here we so go. Be- before <laughs> I go into right what Thrift just asked, there was a Costa series at Santee a few years ago. <laughs> Me, Thrift, J T. Kenny, and Kyle Walters were all standing together. Thrift, J T. Kenny, Kyle Walters, and I. No, whatever. <laughs> And um, he's, he's, he said it right. He's thrift. Learn everything over. for thrift. Learn, everything everything learn how to talk from Can thrift. Can I tell my story? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's go ahead. New story. Continue with <laughs> so, your improper English. So we're at Santee, and we're all kind of you know sharing information somewhat. You know, not specific places, but what we're doing. And first day of the tournament, I get done with this section of trees, and it's the same thing, but it's trees instead of pads, and. I look over, this is the next tre- set of trees I want to go to. Well, J.T. Kenny's there. I was like, well, that gum. Uh, <laughs> one, he's my buddy. Oh, it, it didn't really matter who I know what was, you were thinking. You're like, I can catch him behind this No, guy. <laughs> no. So it was like, well, I'm definitely not going to cut him off because he's fishing anyways, but plus he's my buddy. And two, I know he knows the deal. I am not fishing behind him. Well, I'll just fish that those four trees beside him because he's not going to fish those. I didn't want to, but I pulled up. And we're talking, and I'm fishing this tree, and we're talking, and I stop, and I look, and I jerk, and I called a nine-pounder. And he said, he stopped, he said, I need to know what you're doing, 
because there was a guy fished that tree three minutes ago. And <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the same deal with that fish right there. I'm pretty sure there's a good chance whoever fished that tree right yeah, before me shook it. that fish off and didn't know it. I mean, that's a God's honest truth. So go back to what three or four say in my setup was it was so it was a uh i had two setups very very similar black and blue five inch zoom slinky uh soft stick worm a five alt berkeley fusion 19 offset worm hook i had one with a one eighth ounce tungsten weight pegged on eight hey i'm glad you because somebody asked yeah. if your weights were pegged. Yeah, yes and that's a must you know oh, for, yeah. for doing what brian was yeah. doing like if i'm throwing a texture it gets pegged 100% of the time. Me I know player. people will argue with me, but that's me, and this is my story, and I'm telling it. <laughs> Tell it on. <all. laughs> By <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh, we're going to show that. We out. See y'all next week. 18-pound <laughs> Sunline Shooter Fluorocarbon, a 7-foot, 3-inch Fitzgerald Stunner HD rod, 7-to-1 Abu Garcia S Revo STX reel, so that's one. That's my one eighth ounce setup, and so eighteen pound line, one eighth. My other setup, same bait, same hook, one quarter ounce tungsten weight pegged, twenty two pound Sunline shooter fluorocarbon, seven foot three inch heavy Fitzgerald all purpose rod, and honestly, the the two rods are very very similar. You know, I wouldn't pick one over the other. It's just how I set it up. No particular reason there. Uh, eight to one Abu Garcia Revo ALF reel. And the you know, those reels, they're light, they're very durable, great reel, take up a lot of line. Um, the line's super, super sensitive and the rods been just just a great rod, um, very sensitive. Um, you know, they're lightweight. Um, but they still have the integrity, you know, of a well-built rod. <laughs> and then a tungsten weight. I mean, there's, you know, 10,000 tungsten weight companies. I was using a Reigns, um, you know, not a sponsor by any means, but uh, that's what I was using. Um, so there's the there's the breakdown on that. All right, so so good there tackle go. breakdown. We, we had a couple questions about uh, what was your bait choice, what did, did you peg the weight. So you covered all that. Covered all that. In, in, one, in one fell swoop. Um, so, you, no. You, you need, you need to get on a call with Trevor here soon because there's like five people saying, when's the new new signature Fitzgerald <laughs> rods coming uh, out? Um, uh, anyway. I don't know if I'm quite that status yet. But, <laughs> but hold on now. So, so go back now. Everybody thinks that's the important stuff. And, yeah, it was important, but – Going back, we kind of touched like on it this. earlier. I like this. New is educating tonight. We, we, We're teaching. I love it. I'm an elite series angler. I got to do this. It's my <laughs> job, dude. So, <laughs> so I didn't Continue, weigh in please. a lot. I didn't. I didn't weigh in a lot of weight <laughs> with with off the shell bars, but it did. The shell bars they did two things for me. Number one, the biggest thing, the first day they saved my butt because I would have not made the final day cut. If I wouldn't have caught my four and a half pounds at the end of the day uh, to finish out my lemon on them, so the whole deal there, it was a half ounce Berkeley War Pig. It's a rattle bait, uh, bleeding shiner, um, fourteen pound Sunline FC sniper, and I'll tell you the, in a second the difference in the two fluorocarbons and why I use the two. S uh, seven foot three inch medium heavy Versa casting rod Fitzgerald. Uh, in a Versa, it's actually a, a very inexpensive rod, but it's a very sensitive, very durable, awesome, awesome rod. 7-to-1 Abu Garcia STX reel. And so the difference in the in the sh uh, Sunline Shooter versus the Sunline SC Sniper, Shooter is a little bit more more uh, stiff fluorocarbon. <laughs> it's better for any time I'm setting the hook, like uh, you know a drop hook set, that's when I go with the Shooter. If it's a treble hook bait, a winding bait, chatter bait, stuff like that, that's when I go with the FC Sniper. It's a little bit uh, more forgiving, and um, you know that's that's the difference between the two as far as uh, the two different fluorocarbons. See, I thought you was going to say something cool like you barred your wife's fingernail file and filed the calluses down on your hand so you can no. feel good. And... No, Dude, but she did give me a good back rub. You're, <laughs> you're rocking tonight. <laughs> That's what she it's, said. It's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. 
Oh. It's amazing, it's amazing what, what one week in an Elite Series win will do to a man. Oh. One little blue trophy. It's almost I mean, like he's all already it, said all this somewhere else. Kids I probably it, have man. like 1,297 times. You're on a level that I haven't seen since I was like 16 years just, old. Just go with it, dude. Let, let it flow. That's Dump right. it all out That's there. right. Um, all right. So a lot, of good, a lot of good info tonight. Getting a lot of good comments. <clears throat> We're still over 500 viewers. New you're crushing it tonight, buddy. I, I, I'm going to give it to that, you. That's good stuff, too because I don't think I've ever heard anybody break down that pad fishing bite before like that. Like And, and like you said, we're buddies with JT. He does the pad fishing deal a lot. That's, I mean, that's and where I, I got I've it. I've never even heard JT just break it down like that. So that, the that, only that's person, pretty interesting. The only person I've ever heard uh, break it down to somewhat that extent, not even that in-depth, but was Tim Frederick before. I've, yeah. I've, I've heard Tim talk yeah. about yeah, fill, Tim being able to fill the beds yeah. and things like that, and, and Tim is one of the best pad fishermen out there. Um, but, yeah, that's that was some, some really good information for anybody that's watching the show or, or will listen to this when it drops on our podcast platforms or, or, or even over on YouTube. Um, you know, anybody that fishes pads this time of year needs to be sure to listen and listen closely. Um yes. I've seen a lot of comments about this, and obviously there was a lot of stuff circulating on bass, and, and I want to address it because I, I, I think I think I think you deserve for it to be addressed. But there was a lot of negative feedback about the they, they're calling it the fish slam and all this stuff. Okay, so let me tell you something about the the being a rookie and and doing what New has accomplished and how hard he's worked all his life. When you get caught up in the moment, and and, and I've watched that video back over again, and you you when you lift the fish and you basically drop it in the Florida boat, and you are so jacked out of your mind which is op for obvious reasons any yeah. of us would be it's like spiking a football yeah well yeah well it's like, he, it's like a grunt touchdown in the super bowl well so so in news defense like when when you cannot you cannot be you cannot throw negative light on a situation like that until no. you're actually in it okay because what this kid has done throughout his life and what he just accomplished in the heat of the moment the excitement is overwhelming Absolutely. and and that is i don't i just don't like seeing these negative and it, comments and it wasn't around. done with any intention to hurt the fish a hundred percent promise you a hundred percent new new has taken care of the resource as good as anybody i've ever met in my life and uh you know he was he was well deserving of this opportunity well was actually the, the one that introduced me to the little fish clips where it's, yeah. that you clip on their fins right well and that takes me to another topic which i saw several comments about this tonight so saying, my I, oh. so we'll talk about pouring the, um, the Mountain oh, Dew yeah. because uh, Thrift is a big fan of this. We talked about this on the show. Yes. Uh, anybody that was watching Bass Live on uh, Championship Sunday when New uh, walked away with the W uh, saw you do that and explain, explain to them what you did and why you did it. Well, I'm going to back up just a second. Like the whole whatever you want to call dropping the fish thing. Like whenever I seen a few of the comments, it's like, what are these people talking about? Yeah. And you didn't like, even know. I literally did not right, know that right, that right. happened. I got on my GoPro and I looked back at the footage and I was like, I have zero recollection of that happened. I don't know if I dropped it. I don't know if I was just like excited and it happened. I don't know. I don't know, but I can promise you I didn't just say, hey, let me slam this fish on the, on the boat. But I will say this. So you seen what happened. If you seen it, I put the fish in the live well. I run. 48 miles back across a 12 mile lake george that was rocking and i promise you it was rocking and the i look back there and every single one of my fish was 100 percent let's go make some more love and there was nothing <laughs> wrong with them and um, I, I remember talking to you after the tournament you said i knew i had a big bag and george was rough i didn't go over 30 mile an hour the whole way across yeah george. <laughs> yeah so but anyway, so the whole deal with the Mountain Dew, citrus soda. See, uh, they, they, somebody said, to get it right, Matt, it was Sundrop. I, pr I told you it was no, Mountain Dew. It was no, Mountain Dew. It was Mountain yeah, Dew. Yeah, it was Mountain Dew. Take that. So, Hard to find Sundrop in Florida. True. True I'm, story. I mean, I like, I don't drink regular Sundrop. If I drink it, it's Diet Sundrop. I'm not on a diet, but I like Diet Sundrop. I like the way it tastes. But I'm a, I'm a Mountain Dew guy. <laughs> so if you don't drink Mountain Dew. You can't make this. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Anyways, my story here that Matt asked me to tell, um, you know. No, the, no, the fans asked you the, to Okay, my bad, my bad. Well, you told me the question. So, <laughs> it happens. You hook a fish in a, in a tongue. You hook it in the gill. You hook it in the gut. Whatever. It's going to happen. And especially when you're fishing like this. I mean, just like I said, they bite it and you don't know. They bite it. And 
in the meantime, sometimes it gets down their throat, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, it's just one of those things, and and so you catch fish, you hook, got him hooked like that, he's bleeding. You take your citrus soda, Sun Drop, Mountain Dew, Sprite's yeah. actually, honestly, probably one of the best. I like Sprite better than any of it. Yeah. And you pour it on on the spot that's bleeding, and I don't know the science behind it, but it helps it create a blood clot, and a lot of times it'll stop the bleeding. It's mm -hmm. not 100% of the time, but it's 99. still it's doing your part to make sure you take care of that fish. It's, um, you know, without, you know, if you don't do that, that's like, um, you know, somebody saying you slam the fish on the floor of the boat. For, yeah. And it, it works on, on, the floor of the boat. on any, like even crankbait fish and yeah. you know, rattle trap fish or anything that's, any bass you catch that's bleeding and you're putting it in the live well, carry you some <laughs> type of citrus so soda in the boat, pour a little bit on it. And that fish will be fine ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and right. and so the floor of my boat is not carpet; it is some kind of not carpet material. <laughs> and so, um, if you like, you well, want to you want to argue the slime. You talking about deal. the Ranger Traction yeah. Pad yeah. flooring? Yes. The bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is, is the deal. deal. <laughs> so I mean, there's no argument. I got there about you, Nick. I got you, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish you just let me go with plywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, he runs a ranger like we do, so we need to make no, sure just, we're correct I'm just on messing. The terminology here. Oh. Well, I'm not a ranger pro staff, so I don't know all the details like you guys. <laughs> traction pad. Say, say with me. Traction, traction pad. pad. There you go. All right. Check out that ranger traction pad. <laughs> that was perfect, new. Continue. I've never seen oh. it. Scott Arms. <laughs> Scott you, Arms, you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you say? Scott Arms. Oh, it's Scott Arms. Who'd you Scott say? Arms. Think I said. Scott Arms, you listening? I thought you said Scott Martin, you listening? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Lord, uh, it's good stuff. Uh, man, I tell you what, if anybody missed this show tonight, they, well, yeah, good this thing is, is. A very good, informative show. Jump over <laughs> to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. We never say that on here. Nobody, like, we have three or four thousand I mean, I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know we had a YouTube. I, that, my point exactly. <laughs> there you uh, go. <laughs> we, have, we actually have a few thousand subscribers over there Sweet. on YouTube. If but you if, don't know, now you know. <laughs> you can listen to this show on our podcast platforms when it's downloaded, but you can also go to YouTube. We got and something actually, on Spotify, too. They, that's one of our podcast platforms okay. there, Slick. I got that. I knew that. Jeff, help me here, man. There's nothing I can do with this. <laughs> okay. There's nothing All I right. can do uh, But you can't see the trophy if you listen to it on podcast, okay? We got the blue trophy in the house. You my boy, Blue. And and no, we're going to get a blue new. trophy. I don't know. Did new, have you signed this wall? He, he's I going to. You're going to sign this wall All tonight. Right. Uh, he might have pulled, but he, he hasn't signed it as an Elite Series champion. Yet. See, yeah, <laughs> he, he is <laughs> true. I think I was supposed to, but true. I didn't. Right. Um, the true Joshua, you can't watch live on YouTube. If I said that, forgive me. <laughs> um, but that is a, that's a good way to actually be able to see all these beautiful faces that we have in the studio and the blue trophy. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't take that news. Uh, uh, Matt, Newman? Matt Newman. You want to read his comment, Jeff? No. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. Uh, That's definitely a t-shirt. Chris yes. Lindahl, uh Yeah. You got a lot. You got about seven. Lots. Lots oh, of. Them. That's all hey, right. so I got a question. Um, I, I got one serious question back to the fishing. How many mudfish did you catch flipping pads this week? Zero. You never caught a mudfish. I caught bass. Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. It's the truth. That is the truth. Oh, it is the truth. Is the truth. <laughs> I've never in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this. <laughs> I just thought of a new shirt, but I can't say it on air. Um, oh. we, we could put like uh, "Stay humble" on the front, dot dot dot, and on the back be like, "No, nah, I'm good." Oh my gosh! Sign brand new. <laughs> that was good. I, I caught bass, no mudfish, and lots of them. It's true. It's true. I, it's I did true. catch lots of bass. Lord have mercy. Um, <laughs> I love you, New. I love you like a brother. <laughs> I really do. Uh, right. But I like to pick on you. If I didn't pick on you, it means I didn't oh, like Oh, you got to pick on your buddies. That's right. Old, exactly. Old Amen. fart. Uh, but, oh, you talking to Thrift again? Both of you. Yeah. Oh, Thrift well, don't maybe. have gray, though. Exactly. He dyes his hair. No, I, don't I don't care. Do he otherwise. still don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going to just grab a Sharpie. I might do a little All right. touch-up before you the next. Um, um, 
Well, the camo. It looks like you got a gray sharp, a silver sharp that, is what you've been using. That is good though that you went with the white camo Toyota hat because it does. Blend it does blend a little. little. Y'all, y'all done? Yeah, yeah, let's go eat. Right, well, we I got like a food. trivia question. Right, we got let's a get to it. Yeah, and give an answer away We've yet. got 540 <laughs> viewers on. 538 that stayed on to the end of the show, guys. We appreciate it. Um, I uh, well, I know we didn't get to every question tonight as as usual. <laughs> unfortunately, you know, New just flat out gave a straight up seminar um, on Florida pad on fishing. Florida pad fishing. If you missed this, uh, be sure to go back and and tell your buddies about it. Get on our podcast platforms and be sure to listen to it. Go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Um, a lot of our old shows are on our YouTube channel that Brian didn't even know existed. Um, we've got a YouTube channel. We've got, it's you know a, what it's called, Brian? Let's talk fish. Good, good job, Brian. Good job. I, I knew that. Good job. That. <laughs> um, yeah, we're back in the old studio just for tonight. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Awesome. We we will not have a show next week. We'll be back in studio or the, the new studio week. the week after that. Um, Brian will have a fresh report coming off of uh, the Red Crest Championship. Yes, down in Palest- uh, Lake Palestine. Uh, Palestine. Yeah, it's make Palestine. sure you follow that. I think we're we're that? slated to start the tournament Monday. Palestine or Palestine? I have no idea. Yeah, okay. It's spelled either way, so I don't know. All right, good enough. Uh, it's in Texas. New and I, I will have a I fresh report it. from our second Elite Series stop at Loud and Teleco. Y'all pray for us that we're not ice fishing over there. Um, oh, also for <laughs> thrift. Because <laughs> it's say, actually colder in Texas. literally is going to be ice fishing. It's colder in Texas <laughs> than it is uh, than it is in uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, believe it or not, right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm so, going to have to call Tractor Supply and rent an auger for the first day of practice. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the dang <laughs> truth. Um, all right, New, you ready for the trivia question? Let's do it. What's the answer? The answer, I got it. I got this. All right, I got this. Matt's, yeah. Matt's actually, the actually, sole determined. Actually, let me, no, let, me just, let me just write down the answer. Can you read that? I can read it. Yes. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. So, dating back to, to New and I's history together and when we first met, we actually uh, got paired in a BFL. Um, I drove my boat and truck back from an FLW tournament all night from actually Loud and Loud Teleco. And, um, and drove all the way back to Shelby, basically didn't go to sleep, got up and drove straight to High Rock. <laughs> I did it again! <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Anybody want to come right. up? Anybody want to come up with another trivia question? So Matt just gave the answer away. No, 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 no. no. I got. I, I, I can still finish it. I got this. I mean, I, you can't make this up <laughs> all that long. This is ridiculous. <laughs> My gosh, I can't believe I did that. No. no. It's the gray hair, dude. It's the gray hair. I'm telling you, yeah. y'all picked on me all night. We've about got an over. opening for another show host. Dude. Are you available? I mean, I... He's trying to kick me off the show, dude. <laughs> well, we, we answers. You mean just pick the first one? <laughs> no. 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 Not, so how many times has this happened? This is like the third. Twice. This is like the sixth or seventh. Twice. Yeah. This week. All right. Looks like Carter Handline won. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, in, in all seriousness, we have to come up with a trivia question in like 30 seconds. Who, ready? Go. Thrift, you got one? Oh <laughs> just, just throw it out there on the mic. Whoever can come up with one really quick. All right, let's just see who's paying attention on the show. <laughs> ah, here we go, Thrift. I love it. He's good under pressure. Roll with it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was going. Where I was going with that? <laughs> Where are we going to eat tonight? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, oh, no. Good. no. Uh, all right. <laughs> I need to know. What do you need to do? I'm just rolling. I'm just and going. And you just laughed at me. I'm just going. I'm just going. Okay. All right. Here's a trivia question since I screwed it all Dude, up. Dude, wait. Let me. Yeah. Write the answer down, and then you ask the question. All right. We got a trivia question. Here we go. Way to go. This right. is a trivia question right. pertaining to news. Question. And, and, and by the way, the giveaway is news pick three. Don't say from, that. From Pulse. <laughs> From Pulse Fish Lures, it is <laughs> eight-ounce eight pulse jigs, quarter-ounce pulse jigs, and some Tennessee shad-colored yep. pulse swim bait heads, all in a gift pack for our trivia question giveaway tonight in honor of Brian News' win and at the St. John's to River. And host next week's or next show in Matt's place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go, right, Thrift. You're out. So read it. The trivia question is, New was making the same run all four days at Elite Series at St. John's. 
How many miles was he running one way each day? One way. One way. Keyword, one way. That's a dang good question. That is a good question. Exactly. So y'all didn't want mine anyway. Mine was too easy. Here we go. All right. We got answers rolling through. Is this the answer? That is the correct answer. Do not say it. it. Do not say that. 227. (laughs) See, I didn't do it. I've got one answer. That's all I've got so far. Um, I'm seeing like weights. I got an answer. We didn't ask weights. Jeff's got it. Do you really have a Quinn Motley? No, 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 no. Where is it? I mean, it's already up, but yes. Quinn Motley, 44. Okay. All right. Yep. Jeff got the go. correct answer already. Quinn Motley, That's you right. are the winner of the Pulse Fish Lures giveaway. package. Congratulations. Tonight. Yeah, send us to our Facebook page. Message us on Let's Talk Fish, your shipping information, and we'll get that out to you ASAP. So... Good show, Matt. Great job on screwed up the trivia question again. You did do a good New, job with that. Thanks you, for being a phenomenal guest. You're going to be like booked up for seminars for the next 12 months, probably after that lesson you just gave. That'll um, be all right. Congrats again on your win. Hopefully, I'm better at more than just fishing pads. Well, or <laughs> good at more than just fishing pads. <laughs> I, I, I think you'll I be think all you're right. Pretty decent. I think yeah, you'll be all I right. Think, I think you'll be just fine. Uh, Thrift. Good luck to you in the Red Crest next week. Thank you, sir. Um, Jeff. Don't suck. Job well that's done. My plan. Once again, that's my plan. And stay warm. No that's, good yes. that's the second part of the plan. No, Je- no, Jeff. Again, we say this, but Jeff deserves all the credit. This is the, he's the reason this show exists. He's the reason y'all get to watch us on Tuesday evenings. He's the reason our sound. We have sound. He's the reason we have video. He's, he's the, the reason, smartest one here. He, by far. Yes. By I mean, far. I'm I mean, the coolest. We all fish for a living. He's obviously the smartest <laughs> yes, one indeed. here. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Um, so, congrats to who'd you say one Quinn. Quinn Motley. Quinn Motley. Quinn Motley. Send us your shipping information on Let's Talk Fish Facebook page. Message us your information. We'll ship that out to you ASAP. And uh, Brian uh, New, do you know how to sign us out? Do you know how we sign out? He can do whatever You know he how pleases. we sign out, but we, we don't care. We're going to let you sign us out tonight. So when we can't fish, we're going to sit right here and we're going to talk fish. Bam. See y'all next time. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.